Hi everyone, I'm Tan Chien Hao and today I'm going to present to you my idea on electroponent magnets and the wide ranging applications they can have uh, for robotics and applications all around the world. So one such application is the programmable braille display which can benefit the blind. So uh, this is a proposal that I have and I call to call for people to develop this technology. So uh, first of all, what is programmable braille? So as we know, braille is a system of dots for the blind to read letters. And once you print it on paper, it's, you cannot you cannot ex you cannot change it already. It's permanent. But using but there's a new technology called refreshable braille display, which basically allows the blind to uh, read on an electronic display, electromechanical display that has dots that can move up and down so these dots are actuated up and down and then you can refresh the display in a sense so with this is essentially a updatable screen for them to read and this allows them to interface with things like computers so that um, they are able to uh, surf the web and stuff like that so this refresher braille display is clearly a good technology that can help the blind use the internet and use computers but um, what is the current technology that goes into them? It's known as elect uh, piezoelectric actuators. So uh, piezo crystals are basically crystals that when you apply a voltage across them, they expand and contract. So this converts electrical signals to mechanical um, actuations. So this allows you to interface with mechanical devices and hence raise or lower a dot. And this, and putting many of them together, you get a a programmable braille display. Uh, yeah, my proposal for an alternative is using something known as electroponent magnets. And you see that electroponent magnets have a lot of applications besides just this programmable braille display. So, uh, what are electroponent magnets? They are basically magnets they can turn on and off. So you might ask, what? How is this any different from? How is this any different from conventional electromagnets that we learn in school? Let's say. So, uh, the difference is that. Electro permanent magnets, as the name suggests, they have, they they remember the state and they have zero static power consumption. So let me repeat repeat that again: zero perm, zero static power consumption. So what this means is that usually when you turn when you are turn on an electromagnet, you need to apply a current and you need to keep on applying that current in order to maintain that magnetic field. And then once you take off the current, the magnet is no longer magnetized and you lose the magnetism um, clearly if you want to have if you want to turn on the magnet forever then you're gonna keep on drawing power which is not efficient however with electro permanent magnets the promise is that you can turn on a magnet and the only power consumption is in the turning on of the magnet meaning that after you turn it on if you hold it in a steady on state you if the magnet is is constantly on it draws no power. So how is how this is achieved physically is that there are two magnets, two hard magnets they say, and a, and a soft soft magnet that winds around them like that. So when the two hard magnets are aligned, then the system as a whole forms a on configuration. It's a, the magnet is essentially on. Then you notice that once you switch one of the hard magnets, the way the magnetic flux flows is through the soft magnets, the soft magnetic material. So this closes the flux lines, and the magnet is, and you from ex, from a external viewer, the magnetic field is switched off. So, yeah. So this is possible using um, using using coils of wire and special magnetic materials that have different magnetic properties, namely the remanence and coercivity, which I will come to later also. So with electroponent magnets, you are able to turn on and off a magnet such that when you keep it in a steady state, meaning you do not change the, the state of the magnet, you actually draw no power and that can lead to very efficient magnetic devices and it can be a form of actuation for, uh, yeah, it can be a form of mechanical, electromechanical actuation. So. You might ask, you might ask, where did this electroponent magnet appear? If it's so useful, and the surprising answer is that, based on my research, it has not appeared in a lot of projects. So I think one of the first appearances is this 
thesis, this PhD thesis by Ara Nainan, Nainan, sorry if I pronounced the name wrongly, but Dr. Ara, he, he developed this electroponent magnetic connectors and actuators and he showed two possible applications and this was his PhD thesis. And interestingly enough, he later, I believe he later joined Google and there was actually a project by Google, a uh, pro project under Google. This project is in the A tab, the A advanced technologies and applications uh, and projects thing. So it's a Google A tab project, A T A P. And Project Ara was, I think, clearly named after him. And he wanted to use this electroponent magnets to to uh, to use it as a, a technology in this Project Ara, which is basically modular smartphone modules. So it's a modular smartphone where you can exchange the parts. The parts are in interchangeable. So he wanted to use EPMs to fasten these phone modules onto the skeleton. Um, but but I think that project flopped and uh, later they were searching for other methods. So that was one sort of failed application of electroponent magnets but nonetheless uh, they still have other users. One is reconfigurable matter so if you have a die of six sides and each side has electroponent magnets then they can uh, and this was used in the Pebbles project, Pebbles robots project and then these cubes, these robotic cubes can attach to one another and and um, and form any shape they want. So this is a reconf. This is a precursor. It's a first step towards programmable matter, which is a very interesting scientific uh, technology, science fi technology. And yeah, and this is this development of EPMs could be the first step in development of programmable matter. And yeah, and I believe this project was this. Uh, this type of robot was also developed, was also shown in his PhD thesis. And the last one is a uh, drone package delivery system. There was this company called Nika Drone, which was creating modular circuits to attach these, uh, attach like, like packages to it. So clearly that's a useful application, but uh, yeah, but I checked the price of it and the module is pretty expensive. So my, the goal of my uh, project is to make it cheaper. So it's, the technology is similar for in the case of brow displays, you know that the Amazon Kindle uses electronic ink, right? Which has zero power, zero static power consumption as well, which is why the battery can last very long, zero static power consumption. So I want to bring over this electronic ink idea to something called electronic dots, where we use electroponent actuators to 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 essentially create a Amazon Kindle for the blind. So of course uh, the 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 limitation the applications one could say that the Amazon Kindle such as a device is not very useful because you might as well just use text to speech right or or other technology like you can you just use text to speech to help the blind read the text instead of using instead of investing so much money into electroponent actuators to help them feel the words but uh, I believe that such technology once it's developed it always finds new users new 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 ways that it can be used for the blind for example um, in the case of let's say mathematical equations the a blind mathematician could for example not read he could read the text using braille but when it comes to equations maybe he could not there's no translation for equations in the braille so he's unable to uh, to to feel the equations, but with using using electronic dots, maybe we can develop a Kindle, a Amazon Kindle kind of device for him to feel the equations uh, if the resolution is good enough. And uh, another possible application is perhaps uh, things like pictures. Maybe the blind could use this technology to sort of see of sort of feel braille pictures which is certainly uh, a new kind of experience for them to interface with the computer. So applications would come its way when the technology is developed. And the goal of this proposal or this project is simply to reduce the size of electroponent actuators to the scale that it can become, um, it feels like sand. So essentially the resolution is high enough. So yeah. 
so what I call for is the it's not just about the programmable Braille display but I believe that personally I believe that the open source development of electro permanent magnets will lead to a whole explosion of applications a lot of creative ideas from the maker community around the entire world so well the maker community is very creative when it comes to new things and especially with things like 3d printing that recently has hit the market and this maker community is made full use of such applications so full use of such technologies so i believe that introduction of electro permanent magnets would drastically or greatly impact the the community of robotics and and yeah in general electronical electrical engineers they'll find new ways to use this technology and three such applications i can really think of or i've already come across is refreshable, refreshable braille which is a kind of a kindle for the blind uh, drone delivery which is already kind of used but it's kind of expensive and programmable matter which is still in development and appeared in the phd thesis of dr ara but unfortunately was I don't think it was pursued further. So I believe that I strongly call for the development of electro permanent magnets, and I hope that uh, it, it will it will be it will be achieved in my lifetime. So uh, so now what are the technical steps needed to develop electro permanent magnets? The working principles have already been demonstrated in a couple of papers. Um, and so what it remains is to develop an open source version and in fact if I develop open, if I develop a version of electro permanent magnets I will hopefully make it open source and that will accelerate the the development and the community would come in to help so the 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 steps needed to develop this in a technical sense is firstly we need to develop we need to build a device some giant magnet to characterize we need to build a giant magnet and some meters, some sensors to characterize the hysteresis curve of, mater of magnetic materials, namely the resonance, I mean the remanence and the coercivity. And then, so with that, we can, we can then buy commercial magnetic materials and try to characterize their properties. And then after that, we build a driver. Once we determine the correct materials to use for our electro permanent magnet, then we we build a driver to to magnetize these magnetic materials and we put the whole thing in a small modular casing and then it'll be a it'll be an electro permanent magnet module and then we open source this module and we sell units of this module which would hopefully allow the entire world to to hitch onto idea the idea and and spin off with their own variants of this electro permanent magnets and it will lead to a lot of um, interesting applications so yeah that's my my business idea in a sense not really a business kind of a business but that's my idea to help uh, technology develop in the world so uh, more importantly I want it to be open source to encourage the development of electro permanent magnet the relation related applications around the world I think that's very important for any new technology it needs to you need to let the community come in and it needs to come in a range of different sizes and strengths which would then allow for all kinds of different applications so you can see for big electro permanent magnets it would be useful for drone delivery of carrying heavy loads but for smaller magnets where you don't really need that kind of strength but it would be very useful for the high resolution of braille displays and uh, yeah a medium size mod the smaller you can get it the better the resolution of modular robots will be as well so with that I've come to the end of my presentation and I sincerely hope that uh, you consider my proposal thank you